Hello, and welcome to another of my series of conversations. My name is John Cornicello, and I'm going live on Mondays and Thursdays at 10 Pacific and 1 Eastern. On Thursday, September 3rd, my guest will be Robert Farber, and on the 7th, September, uh, Michelle Celentano will be here. That's next Monday. But today, my guest is Ian Citrin, or Ian Citrin. Ian is best known for his bodybuilding and fitness photography. He's also part of the Palm Springs Air Museum and has this thing about airplanes and aviation. So let me introduce you to Iron Citrin. Hi, everyone. This is uh, pretty exciting to be the opening act for Robert Farber. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have the fame and fortune of uh, a lot of the guys that uh, John has uh, had on and, and will have on. I've been primarily a working photographer. Uh, no big gallery shows. I have had one gallery show, but uh, uh, not of the same ill. I'm going to uh, go right to my screen share. Is that, is it, you got it now? Yep. Okay, good. Um, I think that one of them is you. <laughs> yeah, one of them is me, the, uh, the guy that has some hair. <laughs> uh, um, I don't have that hair anymore. <laughs> um, uh, I actually started shooting when I was probably nine years old, uh, shooting my model trains. Uh, moved on to about 12 years old when I discovered astrophotography, shooting photos through my uh, telescope. Um, and then just had a general interest in photography. Like other people, I had miscellaneous jobs. I, I embarked on a, on a career, on another career entirely, uh, although I used cameras and shot a lot of photos. Uh, at the end of that career, I needed something to do. My wife got uh, tired of me just laying around the house, getting tan and going to the gym. I had been going to the gym my whole life. Uh, my father first took me to the gym in about 1959, the Vic Panny gym chain. Uh, the only person here that would remember that would be Mueller. <laughs> um, uh, so spent my all my time in the gym, uh, and somewhere along the line to said, decided I wanted to be a photographer. Uh, made up a business card, became a photographer, started shooting things. Um, looking at all the bodybuilding and fitness magazines that I had been looking at, I said, well, why am I not shooting these photos? I had met a guy who was the photographer for Muscle Beach Venice, uh, and I asked him if I could go along, and he took me. Uh, I became friends with the show producer of uh, Muscle Beach Venice. Uh, he saw my photos. My other friend who was the photographer uh, fell by the wayside, and I became the photographer for Muscle Beach Venice. That led me into uh, other clients, meeting other people in the industry, and pretty soon I was shooting. Uh, I was shooting a lot of bodybuilding and fitness, um, which led me to. Oh, let me see if I can get this to work. There we go. Full screen. Uh, at Muscle Beach Venice, uh, uh, this was Muscle Beach Venice, and I'll just show you this photo quickly. At Muscle Beach Venice, we would have the Muscle Beach Hall of Fame, and uh, the inductee this particular year was the guy on the right, Eddie Giuliani, a uh, good friend of Arnold's and was uh, of the golden era of, body, golden era of bodybuilding. Eddie said, can I bring, uh, bring a friend out to, um, to induct me into the Hall of Fame? They said yes. And, the friend was Al Pacino, um, hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, Eddie had trained Al Pacino for many, many years, and they remained good friends. That's just kind of a muscle beach story. I photographed a lot of people out there, Arnold, Jack LaLanne, um, other famous people in all the competition. But that led me to meet, um, I'll back up a little bit, that led me to meet the owners of bodybuilding.com, because uh, I had provided photos to them. Uh, from the shows. Um, they uh, had me shoot, shoot more shows for them and that particular year also uh, go and shoot the Olympia, uh, which was their very first Olympia. Um, uh, so I shot the Olympia from, for them from like a Wednesday through Monday, shooting the rehearsals and the press conferences and the workshops and the workouts and everything else. Uh, which led me to, they were very happy with me, led me to being invited to bodybuilding.com for their uh, first ever annual think tank week, which was like in an October. And to tell you who bodybuilding.com is, uh, imagine a vitamin shop or GNC, but entirely on, online. 
Uh, when I started with them, they were already doing about $30 million a year in sales, uh, ultimately reaching up into the vicinity of $800 million per year sales and building their own campus in Boise uh, and warehouses, fulfillment centers around the world. They were entirely online uh, and their sales philosophy was providing a lot of content uh, to people online, uh, leading them to have an interest in what they were seeing and looking at the products and then buying them. And so they had a huge need for content. Um, and ultimately at that think tank conference that we went to, that I went to, uh, they had already decided that I was gonna shoot their ad campaigns uh, their features and uh, and shows. I ended up shooting about 25 shows around the country per year. <clears throat> so for them alone, it almost, uh, although I was, I was a contract, not an employee, um, I ended up uh, pretty much doing almost full time for bodybuilding.com, which was a driving force in the industry. This is um, one of the ads I shot for him. This was just kind of fun. Uh, this is a uh, very famous trainer, Charles Glass, uh, trained all of the top, top Olympia athletes. And so the concept was um, at, that, uh, at that meeting we had to um, uh, say, if, gee, if everybody went to bodybuilding.com and learned everything there, Charles Glass would have nobody to train. So they wanted to show that Charles Glass ended up having to train dogs. So this was kind of a rush ad as half their ads were, uh, you know, like, okay, it's a great ad concept, but now we need it Friday. So I had to, and uh, I didn't have a production team. I was the production team. Uh, so I had to source a dog. Actually, they originally wanted a cat. I rejected that idea. Uh, and then they settled on an English bulldog because one of the owners had an English bulldog. So I had to source an English bulldog who would be, uh, able to, um, walk on a treadmill uh, and be very, uh, very easy to work around uh, a gym. And I also needed a gym that would be entirely empty because sometimes some of the photos show just Charles and the dog in the gym. And it was also, um, like I said, a rush. Uh, and I had, and this was over Thanksgiving. I had to find the dog, which I did. The dog was a, a veteran of TV commercials, like for Petco and so forth. I found a gym, which, I, which was a friend of mine, and a gym that I used to work out in. Put it all together. The dog flew in from, I don't remember where, from some other commercial. Came with a trainer, uh, the owner, and in a limo. Um, everybody else showed up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the dog was the most expensive component of this entire shoot. Um, but well worth it. It was a, there's 300 photos that are absolutely hilarious. Um, it's it, it, it just unbelievable. And they ran a few of them in these kind of ads. Um, and so we, we got this shoot accomplished. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Charles, it was very funny. Uh, I see him at a show sometime later and he says, you know, ever since this ad runs, he's getting calls wanting to know if he does dog training. And so every time this ad ran in magazines and it ran for a couple of years, he would get calls wanting to know if he trained dogs. So that was kind of fun. These ads ran um, in lots of the bodybuilding and fitness magazines um, all the time for months. Then they would drop them, uh, run some of the other ads, then they'd bring them back. And sometimes, so these were, these were out there endlessly. Let me go back to one, let's see here again. Um, before I move on to the other ads, um, I'll show you this one again. Uh, this is probably my most seen photograph ever. You know, I, you know, like my McDonald's has served, you know, 87 billion. Uh, this photo has been seen millions and millions of times, the girl kissing the egg, Renee. Uh, Renee was a competitor at Muscle Beach. Uh, egg Whites International asked me to shoot, shoot an ad for them. And so I enlisted Renee because she's got this gorgeous face and these big lips and, um, and uh, brought her out and we, we tossed around some ideas and so forth. And that morning I said, uh, you know, 
I'm going to make sure I have some eggs in the refrigerator. And so we're shooting away on this thing. And uh, I, I told some of my then makeup artist, um, can't remember his name now, to go down to the refrigerator and get an egg. And brought it up and I said, Renee, let's kiss the egg. And she, <laughs> we, we were good friends. Uh, she started doing obscene things to the egg, <laughs> uh, just as a laugh. And I finally said, Renee, just kiss it. <laughs> And she, <laughs> and she, she did, and she was just going to burst out laughing. She had this huge smile, and her eyes turned to me, and I shot this frame, and this was it. So this is like, I don't know, 17 years ago. Um, this has been, and Egg Whites International is, um, it's a huge industry thing. It's a new, huge thing in um, in the natural foods industry. I think you find them in Costco, Walmart, and so forth. Every one of their shipments, um, whether it comes direct to a customer from them, uh, every trade, all of their trade show displays, their magazine ads, their fans are all wrapped and are all have these brochures of Renee kissing the egg. So probably, probably been printed a few million times and around the world. Can I ask a question? Yes. This ad and the previous ad, do you, I don't know. Um, you gave that, you, who owns the, who owns the ad? You? I own copyright to all the photos um, and I license them. Um, so every time this thing is shown, you get a piece of the action. I did for, uh, we had a, a contractual um, agreement on this one, not based on the number, uh, but based on time run, uh, because at the time we didn't know how, how the company was not, we didn't realize the company was going to get that big. Um, so we had a contractual relationship um, that was uh, remunerative uh, and paid me out uh, an initial amount and has paid me monthly and paid me monthly for a long time. And are these ads run internationally as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, at one point in time, let me, let me go back to the ad with Charles. Um, at one point in time, I was in the ad, um, in the um, uh, ad office at bodybuilding.com. And there was a big stack of magazines, um, huge stack of magazines, some and I've been around for the bodybuilding business for a long time. Magazines I had never seen before and from countries I had never realized had bodybuilding. And I asked and all these all these magazines had the ads in them uh, that run at some point in time. And they also ran advertising in the New York Times and, you know, other big newspapers and other sports magazines and so forth. At one point in time, it was uh, figured out I was in something like 300 magazines a month uh, between ads and features. Internationally. Yeah. Yeah. Primarily in the U.S., but internationally, yes. So I would see these things in uh, Iron Man Magazine, Japan. Um, I had billboards um, in, uh, in the Ukraine, along freeways. Uh, um, I'll tell you a story about muscle, muscle and fitness, Spain. Um, yeah, all over the place. Hey, Ian, I thought Michael asked who owned the egg. <laughs> no, 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 that's, no. That's a very good question, Michael. <laughs> no. still have the, egg? <laughs> the egg belonged to my wife. I'm sure she's the one that went to the grocery store and bought the egg. <laughs> well, she now, should add revenue then. Now, yeah. does, 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 do these models and that bodybuilder, how did they get paid? They got paid. I got them paid. Uh, bodybuilder, the, the, the company paid the models. Uh, Outright. I was, yeah, well, I was very insistent on that. Um, a lot of, uh, actually one of the very famous, um, uh, uh, fitness models, Ava Cowan and competitors, uh, who went on to be one of the very big names of that era had shot for a lot of magazines, a lot of things trying to get ahead. And I got her paid for a shoot for the very first time, uh, and taught her the value of, uh, of getting paid. Um, I was very adamant about that. Uh, I, I wasn't allowing people to do nothing for free. Nice. 
Um, this, uh, this also came out of that very first uh, think tank meeting. This is Jamie Eason, who became also the biggest name and fitness of that, uh, of that decade, of that era. Jamie had um, intentionally worked to get into the bodybuilding fitness business. She spent a year, I learned this when I first met her, she spent a year going around to the top photographers in the country and paying them to shoot her. Uh, the top photographers in the fitness business who had, had potential to get published. And she finally had paid her when she had uh, uh, one photographer shooter who I knew uh, and submit the photos to Planet Muscle Magazine, uh, which was owned by Jeff Everson. And Jeff took a, sign, a shine to her uh, and he put her on the cover and, and, the other, and the rest of the shoot. And it was just incredible. The girl was gorgeous. Photos were great. And it made, it really, it was the talk of everyone. So at this think tank meeting, they brought out a copy of the magazine and said, hey, we want to get Jamie Eason as a spokesmodel um, and sign her to a contract, but uh, we want you to do a shoot with her first uh, at the uh, Fitness Expo in Pasadena in January and uh, see how she works out. And then we'll have her in the booth and she see how she works out with people. So we set it up. I shot Jamie in a studio that was right next door actually to uh, Sammy's camera in Pasadena, a uh, big studio with a psych, and uh, shot her all day. And then the next day shot her at Gold's Gym in Pasadena. It was a, her very first gym shoot as it turned out. Uh, she worked the expo um, and they ultimately signed her to a contract and she became one of the highest paid women in the fitness industry and was just a huge, huge fan favorite. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you. Incredibly beautiful girl, uh, incredibly personable, love her. Um, and I shot the little insert photo that you see on the bottom left also in that, uh, in that uh, uh, screen. Um, this is like a turning point for her and it was somewhat of a turning point for me too because that ad was hugely popular. This was also one of my favorite ads. Um, the, it was it was another ad in the in the uh, ad rotation. A great body is the latest fashion accessory. Uh, and as usual, I was responsible for casting and coming up with the with the shots and everything else. They pretty much just left it to me. Sometimes they would send me a pencil drawing, and say, "Do this." So I was actually shoot, they had actually sent me this girl Maria Rogers to shoot for a feature, uh, a magazine feature, which they would um, they would have placed and also be on the website. So I, uh, I arranged to shoot this actually in a studio in downtown LA, big studio. And I had arranged also another girl to shoot that day for, uh, for a fitness feature. So I try to get, get my most money out of the shoot. And, uh, and we were also doing a video around Maria's uh, shoot. So I had a video crew there also. Uh, so I'm shooting uh, Maria and uh, she's just, dumbfoundingly gorgeous, also incredible body. She's tall, she's like five nine. And I'm thinking, you know, she's the ideal girl for this shoot here for this ad, which was still a few months down the down the rotation. So I uh, so on a break on the shoot, I said, you know, I called the office and I said, uh, Paul, I said, you know, is are we still doing that fashion accessory uh, shoot? He says, yeah. I says, look, I'm going to bumping it up now because I've got the right girl for it. And he said, okay, go for it. So I shifted gears a little bit and started aiming to do um, this ad shoot with her. And, um, and it worked out really well. Uh, I was a hero because uh, I shot both the feature, the video, and the ad shoot um, with just the expenses of one day, uh, although they paid me extra and I got the extra fees for that, got her paid. Were you, uh, at all, were you working with the adver with an advertising agency at this point? No, they did everything in house. So who who was placing the ads? Oh, they did it. Who, yeah, bodybuilding. Body yeah, bodybuilding.com did all their ad did everything in house. Wow, everything was done in house. There were no ad there's no ad agencies in this industry. Um, there is now for some of the some of the uh, magazines like Shape and and, and some of the um, um, uh, you know, Hearst magazines and so forth. Uh, but no, 
They placed, they did all their own ad placements. They did all of that. Uh, everything was done in house. Um, funny thing about this one, I actually had, uh, I decided this was a good point in time to bring a retoucher in on some of my shoots. I was just going to ask you if you did your own retouching. I did a lot of it. Uh, I decided to move up a, up a notch and I contact, I met a, a very high end retoucher. I actually did mostly jewelry, uh, but he was very well respected and, um, and he was in Santa Monica. And I called him up and we had a conversation and we talked about doing some things. And I mentioned to him that I had this shoot coming up and he said, you know, I've got nothing to do that day. How about, can I drop in on the shoot? I said, sure. So, uh, so he came to the shoot also, I was shooting tether. Mm -hmm. And so, um, he was watching the shoot. He made some good recommendations. And when we decided to, um, and so, um, we were shooting, we had lots of sportswear. We were shooting mostly in sportswear. And Maria happened to say to me, you know, I've got this top that I've never had a chance to wear. And is it okay if we try it? And it was actually not green. It was actually red. Mm. And then she said, but I have no bottoms for it. <laughs> and <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> so, so I said, um, uh, amongst the things I always did on shoots, I don't take the chances. I'm, I'm, you know, if, if anything I'm known for not necessarily great photos, I'm known for reliability. So I always carried a certain amount of wardrobe with me, sportswear, if I needed undies, I had undies and everything. And companies would send me stuff to use in shoots. So I had a red G-string, which is what you see there. And, uh, and so we did this shoot with this top, um, the photo, the retoucher actually made the top a little longer. It showed more of her torso in the actual shoot. And he said, you know, this is just a bad color. Let's, let me change it. And, oh, and also she had red shoes. So, um, so he changed it to the green. And I said, oh, wow, that's really cool. Can you lay in a background for it for me? And he did that also. I sent it off to, I had sent the original photos to bodybuilding.com. And then I sent to sent them the retouch, and uh, and here it is as the ad. Um, so I've one got of a question in the chat for you: Do you only shoot girls or do boys too? Oh no, you'll see a lot of guys coming up. Actually, okay. guys were very much more popular, um, and I'll explain that to you uh, mm -hmm. than than the girls in ads. Um, I just happen to pick these. Yeah, because um, okay. I like it. And and this is, <laughs> I've always. Um, love fashion. Um, I've always, you know, kind of wanted to be a fashion shooter, but as, as a photographer consultant once said to me, you're, you're too old, you don't go to the right parties and you live in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're never going to be a fashion photographer. Yeah. Oops. And so, she would like. Let me ask uh, another question. Yes. So we're talking pre-digital. This is just moving to digital. I did start um, shooting film, of course. Um, that very first photo was a Mamiya 645 AFD2. Um, I shot, uh, my favorite camera was, and you'll like this, was a Canon 1V. Um, I love that camera. Uh, the very first Olympia I shot, very first Muscle Beach shows I shot were on the 1V. Um, digital started coming out. They had the, Canon had the 10D, the 20D, and the 1D. Um, I did not like them. Uh, I still like film. I never thought digital was going to become real. Um, Kodak thought the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Kodak and I were very aligned at that time. Um, and I only went digital because actually because of bodybuilding.com because they wanted faster turnaround. So actually my first digital camera was the uh, 1D Mark II. And oh. probably was the camera I been most published with, I'm thinking. Was that the 1.2 crop one? I'm sorry? That was the 1.2 crop? I have no rec recollection. Yeah, yeah it was the little crop. one. Uh, yeah. But when you talk about retouching, so yes. this wasn't given to the retoucher and then they made dye transfers. No. Re the retouching and reduce it down. This was actual uh, 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 Photoshop. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, this was, um, and I'm, I'm thinking back now, this was a 1D Mark II shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, 1D, 1D Mark II was a 100%. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah I have, I have no recollection. 
Um, what I liked about it, what I liked about this uh, very much was for a very long period of time, I heard from people that they tore this out and hung it on their refrigerators. <laughs> so uh, shows, Whoa. yeah. So this is uh, this is a guy named Phil Heath. This was his very first pro show, uh, the Colorado Pro. So this was the type of thing that I did when I was on the road shooting 25 shows a year. Um, I did different than other people um, in that everybody else would shoot like uh, full length uh, booking photos. And, you know, a guy standing in one spot, you know, doing a front on pose, a right side pose, a left side pose, back side pose. And that's what everybody shot. Uh, I changed it. Uh, in between, I shot close ups like this. Um, and this happened to be a show that where they did really great lighting. And this kind of set me apart from the crowd and made my, my photos um, um, uh, different. Hey, Ian, uh, yes. do you still shoot bodybuilding shows? No, I, 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 I burned out. <laughs> <laughs> totally burnt out. Can, uh, I ask you a, can I ask you a question about that? Yes. Even though you don't do it anymore because yes. you were old school in the early days. Yes. So in today's, today's bodybuilding shows, they typically have a show photographer, um, whether it's an IFBB or NPC photographer, and they super frown on people bringing their pro gear. Yes. And you always, you always get the hairy eyebrow. Yes. And so they, they let me shoot, but they also you know, they kind of keep a watchful eye over me. Yeah. Where are you? advice for that kind of – I'm in Seattle, Washington. Okay. So the West Coast um, show promoter is John Lindsay. And he runs, yeah. he runs the NPC shows and um, mm -hmm. a good guy, uh, but very, yeah. very strict. And John, back when I was shooting shows, um, is, was the guy that started stopping that because there were mm -hmm. just too many people. Yeah. Um, so you had to be, um, and not everybody got press credentials. He started cutting way back on that. So, um, so yeah, you couldn't bring in a bag. You couldn't bring in a tripod. If you had a professional camera, you, you know, you, one lens. Um, but yeah, John started cutting back on that long time ago. Um, and it was just not allowed. It got out of hand. And like John said, uh, very simply, what's in it for me? Uh, there was no value to him. And John was all about making money. Um, there was no value to him for all these other people shooting photos. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, so he, 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 he pioneered cutting that back. Um, but I was credentialed and I was a sponsor, so I had no problems. I've been uh, credentialed a few times, um, like shooting alongside of Mark Mason, like either it's uh, behind the scenes sort of photos. Yes. But, but today's, today's shooters are typically in the middle row, like two rows back, and the shots are dead center. What yes. you showed of Phil Heath is, is something you don't see in today's, at least in the Pacific Northwest, you don't see that yes. kind of shot. And that's the kind of stuff I'd like to get. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to do. I, I, w I, I was part of the anointed crowd. Um, because again, we were a big sponsor with bodybuilding.com. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got those center seat positions up close, uh, or basically wherever I wanted to be. Um, and as a constant, and as, as another value, um, um, bodybuilding.com only wanted like a one week exclusive. They were online, it's, you know, a week later for, for whatever they had, it was evaporated. Mm -hmm. And so. I was able to put my photos out to the magazines also. So when you had other magazines, like, you know, there was a magazine I shot for in Japan, they were never going to get good press seats, um, especially at the Olympia or the Arnold. Um, but they could get photos from me um, because I already had the center press seat. So I made me a very popular guy. Uh, Bodybuilding.com found that there was value in, everyone knowing that they could go to the website and uh, see the photos I shot. And so if people saw me at a show, they said, oh boy, my photos are gonna be on bodybuilding.com. They would go there and subsequently they would buy product. So bodybuilding.com made me, made me t-shirts. <laughs> and- I am, Do you have any suggestions for Monty about becoming well, better known or ways in? I, yes, um, the way I did it. You go to the shows and you shake hands and you meet people. Um, don't be pushy. Just let them know you're a photographer. You know, maybe later and give them a business card. Um, that's what you got to do. Uh, there's, yeah. There is no network. Other. 
Yeah. I shoot a ton of the athletes, like for photo shoots around shows. So uh -huh. I shoot a lot of the athletes, but I don't actually shoot the shows themselves. Yeah, um, if, you I, can, if you can do, I had the availability of getting published. Uh, that mm -hmm. market has changed also. <laughs> so if an ath athletes wanted to shoot with me because I got published all the time. If you shot with me, you got published. Um, it, 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 there was a point in time where I had people backed up for like two years wanting to shoot with me because um, I just couldn't, I couldn't get to them and I was kind of picky. Um, just, it's the same old thing. It's who you know. Um, uh, I got hired a lot of times, with, I, sometimes I think without anybody ever seeing anything I shot um, just because they knew who I was. So yeah, you got to circulate, you meet people, don't be pushy. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other photographers trying to do exactly that. Um, just be different, you know, and try and try to get them into the gym, try to shoot some great photos that people will be happy with. Uh, I'll, we'll be coming up to some, uh, to some gym photos shortly. What time is it, John? It's about 10:34. Oh yeah. We got to move along. <laughs> Uh, cover, um, Planet Muscle. I had lots of covers. This was from the Olympia. This is, um, this may have been the last Olympia I shot. This is what, this is like burnout. I actually didn't even want a press seat. Uh, I just wanted to go and, uh, and, and circulate. Um, so I, I, I call up the guy who was running, ran the Olympia and, and credentialing and so forth and, uh, asked him to get me credentialed anyway. And he did. And then he gave me a press seat, which I didn't want. Uh, and then I felt bad about not going and sitting in it because everybody else wanted the seat. I figured I'd get stoned afterwards. <laughs> um, so I went and shot the show anyway. Uh, and then I, I, I got them out to Planet Muscle Magazine. I think they published like 55 photos in this issue. Uh, this is from one of the Olympias. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> This is Phil Collin, who's the lead guitarist and, um, and, and vocalist singer for Def Leppard. So one day I get a phone call from, uh, from his agent and said, uh, he, he says, um, you know, Phil would like to get into the world of fitness with his, with his trainer and on and on and on. Um, and we found you and we wondered if you would like to do a, a, a shoot with him. And I said, hey, sounds wonderful. Let me get right back to you. Because obviously they want to get published. So I contacted uh, my buddy, John Balick, who was the uh, publisher of uh, Iron Man magazine, talked to him about it. He said, yeah, let's do this. Uh, one of the other reasons that I got through the recession, I did a little bit better than other people, is I could also write. So I would also write the stories uh, and give them, shall we say, a, a turnkey uh, editorial. So I went out to Phil's house and shot him, and we became good friends, and I've shot him a couple of times since. And he's brought me out to concerts. Uh, Cover I did for New Zealand Fitness. Um, I became kind of a big deal in New Zealand. Uh, this is my only attempt at doing a family photo. <laughs> um, this was uh, the editor of New Zealand Fitness. She saw the photos that I did, uh, decided they were gonna do a feature about her. So she flew out and shot with me. Um, and we did the obligatory uh, out by the windmills shooting. Uh, this came about as, an, uh, as kind of a, a, necessis, a necessity. The wind was blowing so hard uh, in the middle of the afternoon when we shot her, she couldn't stand up. So I leaned her against a telephone pole and then her hair kept whipping around. So I had her lean her hair back. So, but we did a bunch of shots out that and she's always said that it's been her most fun favorite shoot she's ever done in her life. Uh, this was kind of a, uh, this is a spec shoot I did. I uh, kind of thought this might turn out well. Uh, shot Charles Flanagan, who was a bodybuilder and track star, racing a freight train. Um, and we actually did race a freight train. Um, he, uh, Charles eventually lost. I told him not to give the freight train as much of a head start as he did. Um, this was a kind of a social media success. I had these uh, actually stored on Photo Shelter. I had put one up on Facebook or a couple up on Facebook, the editor from this magazine in Sweden, uh, Body Magazine, very beautiful magazine, uh, contacted me, said, hey, do you have other photos from the shoot? Uh, I gave him access to the, um, to the uh, photo shelter uh, photos, which were ready to download and license. 
uh, and he chose a bunch of them. This became a centerfold, a, a center spread, and a bunch of other photos. Let me ask you something. Before you go on, let me, let me ask yes. you. So you have your own stock files. Yes. And you, in fact, uh, lease your own stock files, or do you have an agent? No, I do it myself. Although I, I also, I, I do have some files with Zoom or Press. And it, most of them are all digital? Yes. Or scans. I, there, if you go back, I do have some that are scans, yes. What's your background? Where did you, <laughs> I mean, this, this is mind boggling. Uh, uh, you know what, let me, let me come back to that toward the end, remind me. Okay. Just so we, because we're, we're burning up. This is Charles again. I made him work real hard that way. It's a book cover. I was really proud and happy to shoot. Uh, Doug Brignoli is a big name in the fitness business. Um, and it's very common for guys to be walking across the gym, gra you know, grabbing a couple of plates to put them on a bar. And that was my purpose in this. This was uh, two opposing big light sources that I had them walk through 12, 20 times until I got exactly what I wanted. And then I turned to black and white. Uh, you can get a Marine to do anything. Zavis is Gaden. It was his, I shot a feature with him. Uh, he went on to be become a big name in the fitness business. Uh, this was, <laughs> uh, uh, um, can't remember his name off the, um, uh, Sergi Constance. His name is Monty from Seattle. Uh, his name is Sergi Constance. He's from Spain. Um, and so he contacted me. He said, can we, you know, can you shoot me? I said, yeah. And he said, uh, so he came out. I had nothing to do that particular morning. I took him out to the, to the desert with a Canon 1V, um, some Tri-X and a 50 millimeter 1.4. And we shot for a couple of hours. I let it go. It ended up being uh, 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 an ad for a uh, supplement company for in muscle, muscle and Fitness Spain. Uh, good guy. Uh, this was uh, my relationship with the Palm Springs Photo Festival. The Leica rep that year loaned me an M7. Uh, I threw some Tri-X in it and said, called my buddy Jacob, who I'd used in ads before, and I said, let's do a shoot. And so that was my shot at shooting Leicas, which I really like. This is a photo that um, I shot. This is the photo shoot that made me move into shooting Hasselblad Digital because um, I love the skin tones and I love processing and Hasselblad focus. And it took me, took me in a different direction, made my life a lot easier. Uh, this is just some behind the scenes photos. A uh, set of tilt up walls I built for the backyard. These are four, four foot by eight foot panels that I can make a half a room of. They can be four foot by 12 foot, eight by eight. I can put flooring down, I can paint it mount things and so forth. Uh, just a gym shoot. Um, this is a bit, um, this is a behind the scenes that that's my one of my Fuji's that was actually shooting video. Uh, but this shot was in the studio and I was actually shooting um, uh, the Hasselblad. Another behind the scenes uh, with another fitness star. Uh, this is my the front of my house. Um, I have a lot of space. Um, so if I, if I have people here, I can shoot here. The bar on the right is where the makeup artist sets up. Um, anyway, I have a lot of room. Uh, I finally figured out what to do with a soft box. I hate soft boxes. <laughs> um, my backyard, which also works out really well. Uh, as does my pool, uh, Alicia Marie Harris, a professional fitness star that we shot. Um, my buddy Maria Bertrand. Uh, who was a, um, uh, a professional model uh, for like every major fashion house in the world and photographed around the world and so forth. She ended up being a buddy of mine. So it was like, um, it was like Herb Ritz being able to call up uh, Cindy Crawford and say, hey, let's go shoot. So that's, uh, I, get, I did a lot with Maria, did features with her and so forth. It's Maria at Muscle Beach. Uh, it's Maria in a tree. Um, <laughs> Maria and the Palm Springs Photo Festival uh, ended up uh, with me meeting Gabriella Mouton, who's an incredible photographer herself, much better than I am. 
And so Gabriella was friends with Ivan Baton of Ivan Baton's Style House, who puts um, the clothes on the back of Hollywood stars for premieres, the Oscars and so forth. Marie, uh, Gabriella said, hey, let's do this shoot for Ivan. I've got this all set up. I'm going to style it. And we did. So it was published in Live in Style magazine, which is a high-end fashion magazine from Rome and New York. And then it was subsequently published in another publication too. This was really cool. I love this. So you, I love you did get into fashion a bit then. Yeah, very. Uh, yeah, actually, it was because of Gabriella. Um, uh, it, it, I owe it to her, and it was because she was friends with Maria, and she saw Maria's photos on my Instagram, and that's how that happened. And I met Gabriella at the Palm Springs Photo Festival. Uh, just some gym shoots. Uh, another another ad shoot I did with. Uh, with this guy and I did some gym shoots with him for, uh, for some of his sponsors. Just another um, feature shoot I did, uh, Tiffany Forney in another gym. Uh, Randoline Sargent, I shot her for lots of things. One of the most beautiful girls I had ever known. She's a great girl, Kentucky accent, just fall in love with her. My wife is from Kentucky too. <laughs> um, and just trying to shoot things differently. Another fitness star, she was also a horse trainer and was raised in the circus. We did two shoots with her out on a movie ranch in Agua Dulce near Vasquez Rocks. A um, couple of shoots with horses. Um, one of my favorite shoots, Lisa Marie Sanders out on the uh, Venice Beach uh, during uh, Memorial Day weekend for the Muscle Beach show. We had a crowd around us like crazy the whole day. There was a time we had like 50 tourists around us all asking her for autographs, shooting photos of her. Uh, of course, she's like six one in these hero heels. Uh, it, it wasn't so bad. You'll see Natalie, my makeup artist, who's six foot in her flats, uh, and she's pretty incredible too. So this was kind of fun. And uh, the Air Force had a F sixteen Thunderbird mock up there at the time. Lisa had been in the Air Force, and so I I had arranged with them to shoot her in the F sixteen. That's my makeup artist, my little girl, uh, who I met when she was twenty one, just a little skinny thing and uh, hired her straight out of makeup school. Uh, she had no portfolio to show me, but I loved her enthusiasm, did a shoot with her. She was incredible, uh, where she did the makeup, she was incredible. She, the fitness bug bid her, and I got her published many times as she, as she built up. And this was also shot in my backyard, just on the other side of the pool with tilt up panels and, uh, and a shower head um, overhead. Um, uh, Sasha Brown, who became a big fitness star, Sasha at the Salton Sea. I love shooting at the Salton Sea. Incredible place. Oh, this is uh, Amy Sedlachik. Did a feature with her right here. She's 50 years old, had six kids and a grandchild. Um, Cara Basso, who I used to uh, shoot for different things, different ads. Beautiful woman. Um, my wife once said when she walked into a shoot, she just sucked the air out of the entire room. She was so incredible. That's a really nice shot, Ian. That was actually a workshop that my buddy Frank Dorhoff did that I worked, uh, helped him with. Um, and at, I just shot off to the side while other people were shooting, um, mm -hmm. just staying out of the way. Uh, this was shot actually with a uh, phase one P45 plus uh, and no lighting. This is just sunlight. I had, had her as Drain Kara. She wanted to walk along the balcony and I said, no. <laughs> Um, I did a series fitness in the military for Iron Man magazine. I did a day with, um, with the fire department uh, at March Air Reserve Base. I, I was shooting a phase P40 plus here. Uh, they had silver suits on. I did not. Uh, I walked in right behind them and about the point where the hair <laughs> on my arms was singeing off, I backed up a little bit. Um, this was a, a rescue, simulated rescue uh, in uh, inside uh, C-130, I could not see a thing. I could not see my camera. Hmm. I had put a fisheye lens on it. I had a flash on it, a speed light on it. I pointed the speed light straight up and actually just shot in the direction I heard noises. Uh, my aviation, I, 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 I was flying, uh, I never got my pilot's license, but I flew a lot. I just never finished. I soloed back when I was like 20. If you want, uh, you can push your cursor off to the side. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so this is just me up at Big Bear in a Cessna, just kind of leading into my uh, my aviation work. 
this was just, uh, we were flying out to Catalina. This, this must have been the 80s or 90s, and that's the Missouri down below us. We were gaining altitude to fly over. So moving into aviation with the Palm Springs Air Museum. Uh, this is our premier aircraft. This was a, um, a ground to air shoot actually. Uh, our P-51 Mustang, which I have flown in many, 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 many times. Um, and this figures in, um, um, whoops, I need to do that, sorry. This figures, uh, photos I did of Bunny figures into a lot of their advertising. This is a six foot tall backlit display at the Palm Springs Airport. So there's about three million people walking past this uh, every year. Uh, it went on to be a poster uh, when we first did the uh, uh, Reno Air Races in 2017 uh, with, uh, in, in commemoration of the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, that photo ended up being on the front page of the Reno Gazette uh, about, the sh about the Reno Air Races that year. Um, it just shows that, you know, it's photos you never really think about. You just see them, but nobody goes, God, who shot that or anything else? but they're published endlessly and it's, uh, and they get repurposed. Um, me at the Reno air races, our first year I flew in with the pilot, uh, in bunny. Uh, we were the first ones there and we were the last ones out. Um, just the, the museum, uh, magazine, I would, um, shoot features and write the stories. Uh, we would have visiting aircraft, uh, which I would shoot also. This is primarily, be primarily for the museum um, uh, social media, uh, which I ran also for a long time. Another aircraft I've flown in endlessly. Um, this is our P-63 King Cobra at the Reno Air Races. There's only like five of these flying in the entire world. Uh, another visiting aircraft, a B-17. I've flown in B-17s a few times. Our C-47, <coughs> which I have flown in hundreds of times. One of my favorite airplanes, and I've flown it also. Uh, one of the amazing people I've gotten to meet, uh, I can't remember his name offhand, he was 100 years old, came out and flew in the Mustang and flew in this T-6 with uh, Tom Nightingale, who was one of our Reno pilots. Uh, photos for advertising, this has been in Palm Springs Life, it's in the Palm Springs Life magazine, annual magazine. Um, went up in a uh, scissors lift to shoot these. We have 100,000 square feet of hangar space and more than 60 aircraft and another one of them. Uh, so again, we're just more photos that I've shot that always get repurposed and used elsewhere. Um, we, we did a, 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 a taxi in with the president of AutoZone for a big, a big event at the museum one night. And uh, I got out of the airplane and saw this photo and just shot it. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, air to air. Uh, we do lots of flyovers. We're doing a flyover on Wednesday in honor of VJ Day with a few aircraft. Um, this was for Memorial Day, a uh, huge flyover. I did what we did with like 25 other aircraft, 20 plus aircraft from Palm Springs all the way up through LA and back. Um, this is the C-47, a buddy of mine flying. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bob Friend, one of the most revered and honored uh, Tuskegee Airmen uh, this, um, at the Reno Air Races when he was front and center and the show was dedicated to him. I happen to be standing right next to him and, uh, and shot this photo. Um, another air to air photo, this time I'm in the back seat of the Mustang. Uh, it's me in the back seat of the T-33 jet. We, this was a air to air shoot. Um, I was actually the target of the, most of the air to air shoot. Um, something you wouldn't think about. The mechanics call me up one day and says, do you by any chance have a photograph of Steve Hinton's F-86, the front gear? And I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do an extreme crop on it. And this was if they needed that to match up for something. And another one of those, they said, uh, Mike calls me up and he says, are you going to be out today? And I said, I can be. He says, bring a big camera. And he says, uh, so I, they were working on this uh, coolant door uh, on the settings on it, where it would be. And he said, okay, I need you to shoot the coolant door as it comes by. So as Bunny came by, I don't know, 150, 200 miles per hour, at, you know, 50 or 100 feet, I would shoot the coolant door. 
Um, this was just a fun thing I got to do. This was the third season of Westworld, HBO Westworld. Um, I didn't get to shoot photos. This was actually a still frame from the trailer. Uh, if I had shot photos, they would have shot me. Uh, but I did get to fly in in the C-47 and be there for two days of shooting. Uh, that was just a lot of fun. I just thought I'd throw that in. Um, 2013, I went out on a motion picture, and a U.S. motion picture, but it was all shot in Budapest. Uh, and it had Jenna Rollins, uh, Rita Moreno, um, and um, uh, Jenna Rollins, Rita Moreno, who am I forgetting? Um, but anyway, it was like, a, it was truly incredible. I was uh, seven weeks in Budapest and it was the, made me miss the only um, Palm Springs photo festival I've ever missed. Mm -hmm. And these photos that I shot uh, as stills throughout the motion picture uh, were all used in, um, all the publicity that went out across the country, their movie, I should have put the movie poster in, and the photos ran as uh, background to the credits at the end of the movie. So I was pretty excited. I was pretty happy about that. Uh, and plus it was a lot of fun. And I got to be with Jenna Rollins and Ann Margaret and, and mm -hmm. lots of other. I shot with Vilmos Zygmunt, who was the um, cinematographer, said to be one of the best cinematographers in the world who said to me, you were really great. You never got in the way. That was the total, total compliment I got from him. He that's never great. saw my photos. Uh, Rita Moreno, that's who I was trying to think of. So Rita Moreno was on this movie and I, I had always loved her from uh, West Side Story. So that was another dream that I got to, the nicest person in the world. Uh, Budapest is where I finally discovered street photography. And somebody said to me, boy, leave it to Ian. He always finds a good looking woman with, uh, with great legs, no matter where <laughs> it is in the world. Um, the other thing I'm known for is my photo excursions. I go out with uh, some guys and we go Route 66. We find unusual places and so forth. Uh, one of the guys uh, is, is just an amateur photographer, a good one, but he, uh, he, get, he enters competitions and he ends up in um, you know, shows and so forth. Another buddy of mine, does paintings uh, from his photographs and he's been very successful. He's in Montana right now. He's in a number of galleries in Montana and so forth. Anyway, Art Patron Magazine did a story about us. And, um, and this, was, uh, this was my photo of the Amargosa Opera House inside uh, that I shot was the lead, lead photo on the story. Uh, that's about it. That's the Great. end. Um, where am I going next, a quickie? Um, <laughs> yep. My next project, which um, got stalled out because of COVID, uh, was doing a project about the Yiddish theater uh, in the early 1900s. Because uh, off to the left there, Isidore Kasher, uh, in my family, who passed away before I was born, he was known as Uncle Izzy. So he's, <laughs> he's a family member. And he was a driving force in the original uh, Yiddish theater in the early 1900s. Lanzmann. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so that's it. That's what I got. Nice. Well, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. You can stop sharing if you want. Okay. So let's gonna... back up. Yes. Yeah. Where, did you, where did you get all this talent? Uh, oh, uh, luck. <laughs> um, I, I came out of another career. Like I said, I, I had always had an interest in photography. Um, and, and truly, one I, I had stopped my other career, and I had been really just going to the gym and laying out in the sun for a year. And I remember my wife walked past the Chase Lounge. Uh, I was looking pretty good. <laughs> and said, said, why don't you volunteer for something? Translated, that meant, meant get out of the house. Yeah. Um, so I decided, uh, I originally thought about writing. Um, but I have a certain amount of impatience. And then I remember the picture was a thousand picture was worth a thousand words. So, uh, so I decided uh, I'll be a photographer, made up a business card. And then I was one. <laughs> <laughs> Here, really? I'm going to share a photo. One of my favorite air, oh, air thank shots. You. Yeah. I always, I meant to ask. Um, oh yeah. Um, yeah. I shot the bluebirds, the blue angels. This, this was fun as they're coming in for a landing and got them to wave at me in standing <laughs> in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's funny the things you see from the air that you actually don't think people are seeing. <laughs> but, but go back. What, before yeah. you decided to become a photographer, yeah, and huh? before you were on the Chase Lounge with yes. the olive oil and, and, and getting tan. Yes. 
you know, baby oil with iodine. Yes. Um, what did you do? Oh, okay. I'll actually tell you. Uh, <laughs> it totally um, not very related to photography, although I used the camera very often. I was a private investigator for a few decades. Um, but I did primarily corporate work. Uh, I did corporate fraud work. I did product counterfeiting, uh, major fraud work, product diversion. Uh, I was in the higher echelons of, of investigative work. And I was, uh, uh, my biggest client was John Paul Mitchell Systems, Paul Mitchell Hair Care Products. I was an expert in uh, actually the counterfeiting and the business of professional hair care products. Uh, I had some, uh, clients also included Sebastian, Chanel, um, um, uh, God, I can't even remember. Procter and Gamble. Uh, did uh, you know, oh, really I, nothing related to other than I occasionally. The arts. Yeah, other other than I, I used a camera a lot. Um, but you had a business sense. Yes. Uh, yeah. I I, I came into the bodybuilding and fitness business. Now, my wife asked me a few few weeks ago. She said, "Do you think of yourself as an artist?" And I said, "No. Um, I I." think of myself as a working photographer. I've, shoot, I've shot a lot of other stuff. I have a lot of work that's very uh, Helmut Newton stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which is some, some of which is on my website. Uh -huh. I have a lot more of that. Uh -huh. But I can never really mix that in with my commercial work um, because I, I never was sure if a client would take offense. Um, so I never really got to get out there with it. It's something I could do now. Uh, I had one gallery showing here in Palm Springs that was up for a few months. It was very successful. Um, but no, I've, I've always considered myself a working photographer. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I just moved into being a photographer and bounced around until I found bodybuilding and fitness. What do you like to mostly photograph now, Ian? Is there anything in particular that, I know you're working on that project, but yeah, you still know, active photographer. I, I, I love it all. I've still, I still shoot some bodybuilding and fitness and I get a kick out of it when I do shoot it. Uh, uh, I've gotten two requests in the last couple of months about shooting, a, shooting some bodybuilding and fitness. With COVID, I'm not like putting everything in my calendars going in pencil. Um, so I'm not considering that. I do, I do have fun shooting the aircraft. Um, I like shooting air to air more than anything else. Mm. Um, his second uh, focus.com, the best website too. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, of course, I'm, chat. I'm very extensive on Facebook, um, mm -hmm. under my name or under second focus. You can find, Do you know, Paul Bowen, uh, name sounds familiar. Uh, he owns a company called air to air. Uh, I probably do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I work with, um, a guy, uh, whose name is Park Air Vision. He does, a, he's the, uh, that's his own company, but he's also um, a test pilot photographer for uh, Boeing. He does all the Boeing work and he does Cessna and so forth. Uh -huh. And we use him a lot. Uh, and he has the camera mounted systems under the airplane and so forth. He did a beautiful video of the Mustang, of our Mustang, and also of the T-33. Uh, and I'm in the back of the T-33. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so Michael, you have a little bit of experience with aerial and aviation too, huh? Yes, a little bit, <laughs> but I, I, from the standpoint of uh, commercial aviation, seven four sevens, seven oh seven, seven twenty sevens. Used to go to Boeing about every every two weeks from oh, wow. from uh, uh, from uh, Kennedy Airport. Uh, I would fly Deadhead up, up up to Seattle because Pan Am didn't fly within the in the continental United States. I've always considered photography as kind of like the tool or the medium that's gotten to take me on adventures. Um, yeah. And I think I asked that question of JP like a week or two mm -hmm. ago. Is it the adventure or the photography? And I have a hard time deciding that because now with the flying, especially because I was enamored with airplanes when I was a kid, I hung the model airplanes from my roof in my room or from the ceiling of my room. I learned how to fly when I was 19 or 20. Uh, flew for a long time with buddies um, and then just always had that fascination with airplanes and now I get to play with the real ones and I get to fly <laughs> them. You know, I, I, I've flown in, I've flown in floor, Ford Trimotor in the right seat. I've flown in a couple of B-17s, the C-47 hundreds of times, the Mustang people. It's a bucket list thing for people to do. I've flown, mm -hmm. I've flown in the Mustang 
50 different Mustangs 50 times. What's your favorite aircraft? If I had to say that, it would be um, probably the T-33 jet. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only flown in it twice. We haven't had it that in our flying fleet that long. And, and you pretty much have to send a fuel truck with it down the runway. <laughs> um, um, so it, that's really cool. The Mustang for the history mm -hmm. of the Mustang is pretty incredible and the sound of that Merlin engine. I never get tired of flying in the C-47. I'll be flying right. in it uh, you know, again. I just, you know, I was in it Saturday and uh, I've done as many as five or 10 flights in it in a weekend, uh, mm. four flights in a month. Um, so it's, photography has taken me on quite an adventure. Plus I've met extraordinary people. I've met, my wife and I have been to dinner with, uh, dinners with uh, shuttle astronauts. Uh, I've flown with shuttle astronauts, um, Medal of Honor winners. Um, uh, the, the guy that was the first uh, that started the Top Gun School other other guys who were commanders of the Top Gun School. Cool. Uh, I've done art reproduction work for <laughs> the, some of the famous paint, a uh, very famous painter. And I shot it. He did a, um, oh, a, a painting recently for the um, um, Navy Museum in Pensacola that I I did an art reproduction for. Uh, the hat the lad that's hanging in some other museum. Um, Cool. So I've been doing some really incredible things. Yeah, we're at the top of the hour. Do any, anyone else in the audience have any questions? Feel free to unmute and ask questions or type it in the chat. Oh, we still have a little few minutes here. Yeah, if I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. <laughs> I always say that. You, you seem to be drawing this, this distinction between a working photographer and an artist. And you say that your, your work is, you're a working photographer, you're not an artist, but you do this other art stuff over here. Could you talk about that more? Uh, you know, I don't know how I can. <laughs> as, as, as I've often said, you know, I'm not like JP, for example, or or or, um, uh, or other guys. Um, with me, you scratch underneath the surface and you find more surface. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I guess. Great I, line. <laughs> great line. I love it. Yeah. So I, I, so I just don't. You know, I, I have fun doing these other photos, and like I said, I've always been a. a as a photographer, we always start out as admirers of photography, uh, you know, and I have always admired Herb, um, Herb Ritz and, and Helmut Newton and, and Robert Maplethorpe and, you know, the guys on the outer edge. Um, you know, I have two Pirelli calendars in here. I would mm -hmm. get more Pirelli calendars except <laughs> I can shoot me. Well, you must love Farber. <laughs> yeah, and I love Farber. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Farber's an artist. Yeah. Um, so... So yeah, so I it's, yeah I love doing it. I guess to that that respect, I am, I am an artist, um, and I think I think some of the stuff I've done have been, has been pretty incredible. Um, you know, one day when I grow up, I'll find an outlet for it. <laughs> <laughs> if only you had a community that, that would love to see this artwork of yours. I, I'm not sure who you could find who would love to see this stuff. But you know, maybe like you know, on a Monday or a Thursday, you could show it to somebody. I, I you know, I could do that. You know, John goes out, out live on Facebook, and if I go out on Facebook, then we're dead. Uh, <laughs> this stuff and Facebook's too important to me as a marketing tool, and it is for John. Yeah. So yeah. we can't do that. If I just put up a, another website with it, not that many people are going to see it. So I don't. I I haven't resolved this for myself. It's we could do another different day and not go into Facebook. Just do we it on Zoom. That. We could do that. I have, I do have a special a edition. I have, I have a ton, not published, not seen. Um, you know, when I was looking for these photos, I was going back through archives. And I'm going, wow, I forgot I shot. <laughs> wow. I appreciate the marketing and branding aspects. That is, uh, that is an interesting effect on a lot of people who are like, no, this is my brand. This is how I make my money. So I don't want to mess with that. Yeah. And that's important. Um, Part of why I ask is because I grew up as the science nerd and artists were those kids over there who were the hip kids. Um, I was over there with kids who were talking like the periodic table. And so for me, developing an artistic sensibility has been a real psychological tension because mm -hmm. it's just not how I think of myself. How many digits Whenever do you I... know pi till? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite pie is apple. So there. <laughs> cool. um, Three point and then round up. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it kind of depends on what you need. And there's a long argument about that. But and I can talk about that. But um, so for me, it's, it's like identifying myself as an artist has been a real struggle. 
because it's just not how I think of myself. And so I'll look at a possibility of a photo and go, well, if I, if I were an artist, I might do it like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll fumble ar around that. You seem to have this really developed sense of artistry. And, and that's because, I mean, you, you talk with, with passion about, about this art of photography, but you draw a line between that and what you do as a working photographer. Yeah, um, out of necessity and, and um, you know, although I guess, you know, a lot of the bodybuilding stuff I've shot has, could, could be, could be, I, I do have bodybuilding shots that are artistic. I have yeah. one, one particular I'm thinking of, a black and white out by the windmills that I happen to love. Um, another buddy of mine in the, in the bodybuilding world, Bill Dobbins, uh, been around longer than I have, um, uh, very successful commercially. He was the first editor of Flex, Ma Flex Magazine. Mm -hmm. He's done a, a tremendous amount of beautiful artistic bodybuilding work. The guy should be in a museum. Um, mm -hmm. But he's but he's had to stay on the commercial side too, um, and and draw those lines. Um, he, he just now he's Bill is like 10, 13 years my senior. He's just now finding a footing again uh, for his work. It's he's had a tough row. Um, so I yeah so I guess you know even some of the maybe some of the aviation stuff is mm -hmm. is, is artistic in its own way. You know that what we're really talking about has got nothing to do with us as image makers. It has to do with how other people perceive us yes. as artists. Yes. So mm -hmm. a working photographer as opposed to a working painter. I don't yeah. mean a house painter. <laughs> I mean, in, in one aspect, we're dealing with, they're, they're dealing with paints and pigments. Mm -hmm. With us, we're dealing with light, mm -hmm. RGB. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I know. It's, you know, that's, that's why years ago, my, my friend, the photo consultant said, you know, you're not old, you're too, you're too old, you don't live in the right place, you don't go to the right parties. You know, I don't wear a scarf around my neck, I don't wear sunglasses all the time and gloves, I don't wear a beret, <laughs> um, you know. I, you I could. You know, I, <laughs> you know, if I drink, it's going to be beer or vodka, um, you know, I don't or do both. That. <laughs> I don't do drugs. I've never smoked. I never, never smoked grass. I'm not going to mix in, you know? So, <laughs> so it's, uh, so I'm kind of, kind of insulated from the world of being an artist. But doesn't the but, body but, of work, the body of work mean something to, yes. to people? I mean, why do I have to, why do I have to shave my head, pardon the pun, but <laughs> shave my head and, and wear a beret and, you know, and, 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 smoke dope well you don't have to worry about shaving your head that's working all uh, by itself <laughs> comb it back and try it that's what i, I gave up <laughs> one of the things you said earlier was that at, there was a point where the standard shot for bodybuilding was front back side done yes and you said no you want to do more than that so you yes. got this box that you're working within as you work the photographer yes but within that you're looking for where's the art yeah, yeah, that's I, my impression from, from what you from what you've said. I with did do that. Stuff, with the other stuff, it's like, okay, here's this box, but within that, I'm going to be as artistic as I can get away with. Pretty much, uh, I, I had two things going uh, going for me or against me. Number one, I wanted to do something different, okay, because mm -hmm. I wanted to stand out a little bit. The other thing is, I don't see vertical. For me to shoot vertical, it's a stretch. Yeah. Um, I see horizontal. Every I see everything in that. That, that that format. Um, so uh, I would forget to turn the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Which was bad in the in the magazine days because for covers. Yeah. Well but now yeah. that we're on the web, all our screens are horizontal. So No, yeah. you now see you with him it. with him he shoots it horizontally because it involves a double page spread. <laughs> <laughs> and I would shoot horizontal and then crop it for the um, I would shoot with a lot of lot of, I'd leave yeah. myself a lot of space and then crop crop the uh, vertical. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just what I would do. But then you went to the Hasselblad, so you're square. No, I Hasselblad oh, yeah. digital. So I'm- Oh, I'm, Hasselblad, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, what is that, four by five? Yeah. Or it's a little odd, <laughs> it's a little bit different. Uh, but I would still shoot, uh, even with the, with the Hasselblad, I, I'm, I'm still shooting, I see everything horizontal. Yeah, we each have our ways of seeing, like for me, I see telephoto. You know, I don't understand <laughs> wide-angle lenses. <laughs> I, in, in, when I was getting to the point of burnout, the last 
when I showed you the Planet Muscle magazine that I shot. Um, I shot that show. I put uh, my camera, I did put it vertical. Um, and I shot, I, I shot some horizontals also, but I put the camera vertical on a uh, monopod. Um, and <laughs> show you what a burnout I was. So I'm, I, I got one of the premier press seats. I'm sitting in the, in, you know, I've got the can of camera pointed in the right direction. Um, and I'm basically just, yep, okay, yep, okay. Yeah, I'm not even looking <laughs> at the viewfinder anymore. <laughs> it's like, I have done this so many times. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I, I always said they could just have like a, an automatic camera as a pool camera and just get the photos out. Yeah. So <laughs> in a domain that is where image is just that essential, you saw it for decades. How did it change? How did people's relationship to their, their images change over that time? I don't know if I saw much of a change, you know, in shooting the shows. Yeah. I don't know if I saw much of a change. I mean, obviously it went from film, um, yeah. you know, um, uh, to digital. When it went digital, a lot of people started missing a lot of shots because everybody was looking at the back of the screen. <laughs> I never looked at back of screens until that last show where I just wanted to make sure I was pointed in the right direction. Um, <laughs> um, so a lot of people would miss shots. Uh, that was, you know, chimping became, I, I would see, I would turn around and see guys looking at the back of the camera where I just shot some incredible mm -hmm. pose. Um, so I think, um, I don't know, I, uh, uh, more of the amateurs or the second tier pros got into it. Uh, there were really only about six of us that really fed all of the magazines and, and all the supplement companies. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody else was off to the sides, shall we say? Yeah. Why don't cool. you do some? Why don't you do some abstracts of pieces of your incredible black and white uh, images, where you, you know you're looking at mass, you're looking at muscle mass, as opposed to the entire person. Well, the interesting. Abstracts. Interesting, you bring that up. I would get um, bodybuilding.com would 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 get an idea for doing. Let's say they'd want to do a feature on just arms, so they'd ask me to go back and find photographs of great arms. I didn't shoot just arms. I shot bodybuilders, but I would go back and look for bodybuilders with great arms and then crop them. Right. So yeah. things like did like that did happen. I used to shoot for them every Tuesday. I'd have to put out a wallpaper of the week. Remember when we have computer wallpapers? <laughs> yeah. So I'd have to kind of, every Tuesday I had to find photos for a wallpaper of the week. So we did one. It was Maria Rogers that was in that ad, and uh, and they they cut her up. Uh, they did uh, a legs, a torso, and then a um, or maybe a two pieces or two sections of her and each section became a wallpaper of the week. Um, so they did things like that. Uh, it's not, not the way my mind works myself. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily see that, although I, I, I might crop photos uh, just to get- right, I'm sort of like that where I'll, I'll find things later on. You know, I didn't see it as I was shooting it. Yeah. And I realized that's what I really wanted. And then that goes back to my telephoto thing. I want to be in tighter. I, I, I shot, I put a photo up on Facebook on, and on my blog of a, a close-up of a girl with her hair hanging down and red lips. Mm -hmm. And that was actually a full frame. Um, I think she's nude. Um, and I had gone back, I was looking just for something to put up and also not get in violation of anybody's <laughs> terms of service. And so I kept cropping it back and then I saw that and I said, God, that is really cool. So I cropped it and I put that up. Um, but that was from one of my, uh, one of my more. Um, uh, We're just lucky that the Facebook algorithms don't realize that that's part of a nude picture. Even you can't see the rest. <laughs> there was nothing in the rest of that that said nude. <laughs> Boy, I could actually envision a, uh, a, a suite of a suite of images of yours, um, just eleven by fourteen, thirteen by nineteen, black and white, of just pieces of, of, of body just showing the muscles, just yeah. the ripples, the, 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 the glaze, the, I mean, that would be an incredible show. Actually, I just thought of something. Um, in this gallery showing I did a few years ago, and I don't remember how, year, how long ago it was, 
uh, the, the, the guy that owned the gallery was known for doing things on old automobile parts. Uh, okay. He would rings, rings out of, you know, old blocks and, and he would, he would make things that he would hang, repaint fenders and they would become art pieces. So we corroborated on some stuff um, where he mounted, uh, where photos were inlaid transparent over uh, automobile fenders and, and then cut into like nine. So it was kind of like along what you're thinking. I think we had one like that. Um, I just don't remember it vividly. I probably have a photo of it. Wow. Well, I want to thank you all. I mean, we're, we're out of 11.20. I'm willing to go on a few more minutes if there's more questions, but any other questions? You know, people got to get back to life. What's that? Any, any other questions? I can make up answers as I go. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of thank yous in the, in the chat from Fusako and from Dennis. Very informative. It was great to hear from an active working photographer. Well, thank you. Thank you. I will say I've, I've shot lots of other stuff as I was going through my photos. I was reminded <laughs> of it. I've shot, used to shoot for Private Clubs magazine, which sadly was not for strippers. Um, <laughs> it was actually the membership magazine for Club Corp, which owns country clubs around the world. I used to shoot chefs for them and famous members. I shot covers for them. I'd forgotten about that. Um, I, 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 I shoot, I used to shoot for special, uh, special Olympics. I shot their summer nice. games, their annual reports, their John Wooden dinner. Um, just, again, I, my photography has just taken me, taken me to great yeah. places. It's been, it's been. Do you do your own printing? I do some. I have a Canon Pro 2000 here. Um, uh, don't tell Dano. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, he knows. Actually, I've been in two two of his Epson promo videos. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> but I, I promise to. If I don't buy an Epson next time, he's going to come down and chop down all. My, come out and chop down all my fruit trees. <laughs> um, uh, I do some. Uh, I used. I, I I did print photos for that one show that I did, um, and I've used it uh, for promotions. I wanted to. Uh, there was a magazine publisher in New York. Uh, he had five titles in the bodybuilding business. This guy um, did not use email. Uh, he did not use a computer. Uh, and this is well into the digital age. Uh, his secretary would print out his emails and give them to him. Uh, so if she was going to print out photos that were emailed, they were going to look like poop. <laughs> so I sent, so I, I, I had the idea one morning, I woke up and I printed out, I don't know, three, four, five, 17 by 22s of, uh, of my photos that I thought he would be interested in based on his magazines. Uh, rolled them up, put them in a FedEx tube, sent them out to him, FedEx overnight morning delivery. Uh, I got the delivery confirmation at the time. I got a phone call from him within an hour. Wow. And, and, and there, uh, thereafter, I was shooting for him. We had a very fun conversation on the phone. I said, if I come out to New York yeah. and find, find you selling copies of these on the sidewalk in front of your building, I'm going to be really <laughs> pissed. <laughs> a question just came in on Facebook. Have you ever shot Arnold? Yes. Um, not in an actual shoot. I've known Arnold for a very long time. Um, I've shot him as he's come out to Muscle Beach and done appearances at Muscle Beach. I've shot him at the, at the Arnold Sports Festival. Um, uh, we know each other by sight. Um, I don't, I don't know if he, yeah, he'd re recognize me if I saw him. Mm -hmm. He, he has kind of a family, uh, relationship to me. Um, his first movie was Hercules in New York, and that was directed by my uncle. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's a, it became a cult favorite. My uncle for years did not want anyone to know because it was <laughs> such a lousy movie. Um, and he's gone on to be win Emmys and Golden Globes, and he's done you know fifty motion pictures yeah. and TVs and everything after that. One I didn't know he had directed it; he'd left it off his resume. And one day I'm actually watching it. I had never watched it, so I'm watching it. And he come, my uncle comes up in the credits. I don't know if it was the beginning of the end. And I said, "Holy sh!" <laughs> and I <laughs> and I immediately called him. I said, "Did you you directed Hercules in New York?" He said, "Don't tell anybody." <laughs> what was his name? Arthur Seidelman. So the way it came about, uh, I'll bore somebody with it. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, Arthur Seidelman? Seidelman, S-E-I-D. Oh, Seidelman, okay. Uh, he was directing at the time, 
uh, a show on Broadway. I'm trying to remember, Awaken Sing on Broadway, a young director. So he's, and one of the people for the Weeder organization who wanted to do this movie saw, Awaken, saw, saw the production, said, boy, this guy's a great director. So they contacted my uncle, uh, sent him a script, <laughs> and as he says, he says, we thought it was a comedy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why it's got these comedic overtones to the whole thing. <laughs> it was not really meant to be a comedy as it turned out. But uh, they paid him, a, he said they paid him a lot of money, especially for a young director at that time. So he had to do it. And when, when else has anyone ever got to do a chariot race in Times Square? So, uh, <laughs> right. That's right. right. That's right. So, uh, so Arnold and I have kind of a long history. Um, so when I when I first finally met Arnold, I said, "Yeah, I'm Arthur Seidel's nephew." So we, it was instant. <laughs> so we're coming Very to the end funny. here, but I guess we could say, "I'll be back." <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesday, or no, on Thursday with Robert Farber. So I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that's one I'm actually listening to, interested in, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, going to tell you something real quick. Uh -huh. uh, in my previous life, my father and my grandfather owned a liquor store in Newark, New Jersey. And I, I helped in the store. Uh, um, Robert, Far Robert Farber's father owned a beer distributorship. And Robert Farber was our salesman for his father's beer distributorship and his his famous uh, beer was rolling rock beer <laughs> farber bobby and i go back from pennsylvania to our days huh Ro rolling rock from pennsylvania rolling rock but bobby and i go back to our days in essex county new jersey he was from maplewood south orange and i was from livingston at least farber mm -hmm. has a career to fall back on that's true <laughs> That's true. Here. <laughs> That's right. I was just across the border in Union County in Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll quickly say if anybody has any questions, you can get me at Ian at secondfocus.com or if you just go to my website, secondfocus.com or find me on Facebook. I would love to be able to stay in contact with you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I Whether you, I, you're going to cut, you're going to cut me off, right? For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a mensch. You really are a mensch. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Well, thank you okay. all. I'm going to shut down the Facebook one first. Let's do that here. A lot of fun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, coming from you, that's a compliment. It's no, no, no. Really, I, not I, a big I, one. I, <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I enjoyed that. I really did. <laughs> good, good.